Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to The Puzzling Life. The Puzzling Life is my new series of shorter videos where I'll be showing you my puzzle haul from the week, giving you mini reviews of any puzzles I finished that week, and it'll give me a chance to share any news about the channel and to answer some of your questions. July was a good month for puzzling for me. I use the Puzzle Tracker app to track the puzzles that I'm completing. If you're looking for a tool to track your puzzles, I recommend this app. I'm gonna link it in the description for you. It's super simple to use and the basic features are free, and it allows you to look at some statistics about your puzzling habits. So I can tell you in the month of July, I completed 23 puzzles, for a total of 11,839 pieces. And apparently the most frequent brand that I did in July was Zen Chalet. I did three Zen Chalet puzzles, which doesn't surprise me because I love them. My favorite puzzle that I did in July was this one from Gallison called Saguaro Forms and Cactus Flowers. This is from their Frank Lloyd Wright collection. This is such a fun puzzle. I got it at a thrift store for a few dollars. It's a thousand pieces. They've added this gold foil to it. I love a puzzle with just like a colorful geometric pattern. So this was super satisfying to put together. And now I wanna try all the other Frank Lloyd Wright puzzles. Love this. Okay, before I get into the puzzle haul from this week, I wanna to respond to a couple of comments that I've gotten from viewers. I always appreciate the really thoughtful comments that I get from you guys. I do read all of the comments I get. I try to respond to as many of them as I can. But what happens a lot is that I get a comment that I'm thinking, ooh, I have a lot to say about this and it's way too much for me to respond here. So here's a couple comments from the last week that got my wheels turning. The first one is from Mark B 933 This was a comment on my video about wooden puzzle brands, and they write, We loved Unidragon and Zen Chalet. Have you tried Wentworth puzzles from London, UK? They are very good also. So thank you for that recommendation. I have not tried Wentworth. They've been on my radar for a long time. They're definitely a brand that I would love to try. And the reason that I haven't is that my puzzle budget is really tight. I go through a lot of puzzles quickly. The main ways that I get new puzzles are I get them at thrift stores for two to four dollars each, or from eBay where I spend more money, but that's usually for something special, usually for those nice vintage puzzles that I love or new puzzles from puzzle companies that will send me products to try and to feature on my Instagram and on YouTube. So honestly, it's the minority of the time that I'm actually buying a new puzzle. And Wentworth is just a little pricey for my budget. But I am considering joining the Hofnagel Wooden Puzzle Club. Through Hofnagel, you pay a monthly subscription and then you get to borrow wooden puzzles. A lot of them are from really nice premium brands. And so if you do a lot of puzzles in a month, it can really work out to be a great bargain. So I'm looking at possibly joining that to get an opportunity to try some of these premium wooden puzzle brands that I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna link to them down below. The next comment is from Mary Sharp 6366 commenting on my video about the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time. And they write, I just was saying yesterday, how would you do a double-sided jigsaw? It would drive you crazy. And my short answer to that was, well, it depends on the puzzle. That one did drive me crazy, but it's because the image on the back was kind of poor as a puzzle. Although many, many commenters pointed out to me that I probably wasn't supposed to attempt the backside as its own puzzle, and rather was supposed to use the front and the back to solve each other. I've done a few double-sided puzzles that I thought worked really well. One of them was this one from the Mystic series. This is Express Yourself. I did a video about these. Both sides of this one are a great image on their own. Making it double-sided just kind of doubles your puzzling fun. But taking a look at the pieces, most of the time, double-sided puzzles are cut in a way where you can tell which side is the front and which side is the back. So the die that cuts them is like a big cookie cutter, basically, that punches through the cardboard. So you can see which side it has punched from. It sort of pushes down and bevels the edges in. 
So the front has kind of a rounded appearance and the back side is a little flatter. So for the vast majority of double-sided puzzles, you can immediately determine which side is the front and which is the back, even if the images are really similar. But there is a brand called the World's Most Difficult Jigsaw Puzzle. And the gimmick with these is that it's the same image printed on the front and the back, just turned 90 degrees and then the puzzle is cut both from the front and the back so that you don't have that little trick to tell which side is which. I've never tried one of those, maybe someday, but that one really would drive you crazy. Let's take a look at this week's puzzle haul. So the first one up is very special. My birthday just passed, and so my dear friend B had a custom puzzle made for me from Ravensburger. This is the My Ravensburger. And this is a really special picture of the two of us together. As a puzzle, I don't think it's a bad image. There's a lot of objects in it, different spaces. There is a lot of black over here that I'm a little worried about. But overall, I think she did a good job of choosing. Next up in this little box, in this little bag, this is a puzzle by The Puzzled Company. It's 121 pieces little pieces. This is one of their mini puzzles. And the thing about the Puzzled Company is their puzzles are water jet cut. I don't know of any other company that uses this method to cut their puzzles. So they're plastic pieces cut by water jet. All their puzzles are waterproof and they float. So I'm really excited to try this. I might try it in a swimming pool or in the bathtub. I'm not sure yet. And this one is called Geometry Homework. It's a great little image. Super fun. So thank you very much to the Puzzled Company for sending me that. I'm very excited to try it. The next one was also gifted to me by a company. This is uh, a little package I got from Micro Puzzles. I'd never tried one of these before, but they've been on my radar for a while. So Micro Puzzles come in little plastic test tubes. They're perfect for just like throwing in your pocket or throwing in your backpack and taking them on the go. They're 150 pieces and they sent me three different ones. This panda, flamingo, and this one is some houses. Super cute, love these. And in the box, they also threw in some little puzzle extras. So I've got a micro puzzles magnet. And this puzzle pin, I love it. And this is my favorite, Puzzle Socks. So great. Thank you so much, Micro Puzzles. And I did also go to the thrift store this week, so I have three thrifted puzzles. This is a little 100-piece puzzle called Plant Collage. It's from RMS International. I've been trying to expand my collection of little mini puzzles because they're so great to have for taking on trips or speed puzzling practice. I'm getting together with a friend soon to play some puzzle chess. So we need some smaller piece counts for that. So I thought this was a cool one. Then I got this one, Tchotchke. This is a thousand pieces by Piecework Puzzles. This is gonna be my first Piecework Puzzle. This is a brand I've been wanting to try for a while, so I'm really excited about this. I think the image is really playful and fun. What I'm worried about is the spacing of the piece cut. Like, is there gonna be some image on all the pieces or are there gonna be a bunch of pieces in between objects that are just solid blue? So we'll see. That's gonna make a big difference in how difficult this one is. And the last one is not the kind of thing I usually get, but I just couldn't walk away from this one. This is a 100-piece Milton Bradley Cabbage Patch Kids puzzle from 1984, and it is still factory sealed. I don't know why I just had to have this one. It's so deliciously 80s. One puzzle that got added to my wish list this week is this one called East of the Sun and West of the Moon by Art and Fable. These are illustrations from a Norwegian fairy tale book. So beautiful. It looks very doable with the different borders and text. And I heard about this one while watching an old review video from The Casual Puzzler. So I'm gonna link to that video down in my description. I've been wanting to try a puzzle by Art and Fable. And now that I've seen this one, I'm like, that's the one, that's gonna be the one I try. 
And finally, let's take a look at the puzzles that I completed this week. First of all, this is Rangers Landing in Africa. This is an 80-year-old World War II puzzle. There's a bunch of interesting stuff about this puzzle, but I'm not going to get into it here because I did a whole video on it. Go watch that video because I had a lot of fun doing this one. This is a 750 piece from Buffalo Games from their Stargazing series, and it's called Color on the Mountain. This one was also a birthday present. This one's really beautiful. The colors are so vivid in person, and it had a nice blend of easy and hard parts. The mountain and all came together really quickly, and then it got harder as you work your way up into the sky where there's these big sections of pink purple. I liked this one, this was really nice. Then this is a 500 piece Zen Chalet. I'm a brand ambassador for Zen Chalet. So if you use my promo code PUZZLEFILE, you'll get 15% off and I get a little commission off of that. And I really love their puzzles. They've got bright, thick pieces at a really reasonable price compared to other wooden puzzle companies. This one was not easy, but I could not walk away from it. I actually sat and did this whole thing all at once. I puzzled way past my bedtime that night. So much fun. And this one also comes in a 200 piece and I I think they have it in a thousand piece now as well. And this last one, this is by Liberty Puzzles. It was 323 pieces and it's called Toucan. If you saw my Wooden Puzzle Brands video, I did that puzzle of a grizzly bear. This is the same brand and the same artist. My sister sent me this puzzle when she was done with it. Thank you, Becky. Liberty Puzzles have really amazing high quality pieces. I love this brand. I definitely want to do some more of theirs. So that's the puzzling life this week. Let me know what's new in your puzzling life.